So when the news broke, he he sent out a tweet Friday that he was retiring. Uh, how shocked were you? Yeah, I mean, I was shocked in in one sense just because of the finality of it. But you know, you could see the thing building up. I mean, when I saw the Wall Street Journal second article, my immediate reaction reading it is that he's got to go. And um, and he was then you know after that he had told the town that he's not going no matter what. Um, you know, at the Vegas show, uh, July 2nd. And um, so I thought there might be a big fight. And then he kind of went quietly. Um, and I guess his investigations must have turned up things that uh, they felt that he had to leave. Um, and I, I could see it, you know, when um, the second when the second story came, I really could see that it was it, there was a real good chance that it would happen. But the second story didn't get as much media pub as the first um, so then I started thinking like, well, maybe, you know, he'll just stay head of creative for a while. But, um, I mean, the, the moment of the, of the thing was, was a shocker, but the fact that it happened, not, not really. So do you think he retired more because he didn't want more scandals coming out of the woodwork? Or do you think he retired because of this specific story where he paid off? I think it was four women over 15 years, $14.6 million. And then there were some issues, I guess, with the board and whether it was a personal expense, business expense or something. I, I apologize. I don't know enough about the business world to know what that whole deal was. But in specifically about him retiring, what do you think it was that made him say, OK, I got to go or someone telling him he's got to go? I think that the feeling was is that with the investigations against him, um, you know, by the SEC and, and maybe a federal probe um, that he had to go you know i don't think it was you know i think that it was well known i don't i never heard of any pressure from like nbc or or fox they have a morals clause in the contract where they could have you know used this to pressure him to go if they wanted to um but i didn't hear that they did that when it when it first happened before we had heard about the federal probe and the um and the uh, sec investigation you know the, the the talk in the company and my speculation was that okay it's either you know, one of the sponsors or TV stations or something invoked that clause and pressured him out. Or um, there was something that, you know, from a media standpoint that they got wind of that was coming another story. And maybe that was just like, OK, they're going to just keep coming with new stuff and it's just best that I leave. But I think that it was just, the, you know, the, 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 the fact that he was being investigated and that it was getting to be real controversial for the company. And they had to, they have to redo some books for the last couple of years regarding profits, losses, and expenses. And they didn't uh, do their accounting right because of perhaps stuff he either withheld or, um, or, or whatever. And um, yeah, I think he just had to go. It's, it, you know, it's still amazing. Like, you know, you say he had to go and it's still amazing to me that he went. You know, you've always thought yeah. that it's his company. He's pro wrestling. He has it's said, anonymous. you know, while he has not done a million interviews over the years, he's always, you know, everyone thought he's, he's doing that job till he, till he passes. Like there was no retirement was never a word you ever thought that would ever be associated with Vince McMahon. This obviously isn't really a retirement, but I'm surprised no matter how much pressure there was forcing him out. I'm still surprised he, he went. The one thing I always thought with Vince was the only way he would go was to save his company. And I and he was the person who would save his company first. And I think that that is maybe part of it. Plus, right. you know, again, he wants to save it for, you know, his daughter, his son in law and, and just his legacy. I think that right. he wants this WWE to go forever because as long as WWE is around, uh, you know, Vince McMahon was he was not the creator of WWE, but he was the creator of this version of WWE. Right. And he was the creator of this version of the pro wrestling business. And I don't think he wants that lifetime of work to go away, you know, especially when you're older and you kind of like realize that, uh, you know, your life is your legacy. Right. You know, and how you're how you're remembered. And he's going to be remembered in a lot of different ways. You know, there's there's a lot good and a lot bad when, when it comes to Vince. Yeah. I mean, any any story that's um, only good or only bad is missing a huge part of the story. Yeah. Um, I want to get into what's going to happen going forward. But, you know, when the news first broke, of course, everyone's first take is, is this real? Is this not real? I think everyone now knows it's real. But there is a question here about can he come back in six months? Is it let the pressure die down, let the media stories die down and come back? Or do you think this is it? 
I think it, I, I mean, my gut says this is it, but I think that the deal is, is that when these investigations are over, if they clear him, I think that he would try to come back if, if, you know, when the investigations are over. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's my thought on the subject. If he's somehow cleared of all wrongdoing, I don't know how, but if that's the case, then I think he would come back. Right. Now, this is a bizarre question that would only work here in the wrestling world, but could he come back? This week, as a char- as an on air character, I, I don't think that's happening. But no, no, I, but I know it's not. I know it's not happening. But I'm saying that could that that's not something that is not allowed to happen. No, he's got to be divested from the company for now. I think that that's okay. pretty clear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And as long as these investigations are ongoing, uh, you know, he's out. John Laurinaitis is out, right. and um, you know, and you know, yeah. So what makes this crazy too? another layer and all this is, you know, Stephanie had just taken a leave of absence, right? Triple H um, had had health problems. So he was away from the company. Now they're both back with Nick Khan in the mix as well. Give me uh, in terms of the WWE superstars. Are they happy that it's Triple H running creative and, and Stephanie in charge of the company with Nick Khan? I think so. Um, you know, he, he definitely has a lot of allies there. Um, you know, for, for the position he was in in NXT, um, you know, a lot of the older wrestlers, you know, might have had issues with Paul, Paul Levac, Triple H. Mm. But um, most of the younger wrestlers really like him from a management standpoint. They, a lot of them came up through NXT and he was, um, you know, very well liked from there. And, um, you know, you always have your, your uh, the people you butt heads with, especially in the wrestling business. But, yeah, I think that it is... Um, uh, you know, uh, the shock and everything. I, I know some people are kind of like, well, we'll see how it goes, you know, kind of um, skept- skeptical or wait and see. But most that I've heard from are are positive. I think that they right. think that it's it was time for a fresh approach and, um, you know, different a different view of the creative. And they think that that Paul, I think the wrestling that a lot of the wrestlers like mm. is 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 similar to what Paul likes, whereas the wrestling that a lot of the wrestlers grew up on and their favorite stuff inside, um, Vince was more into other aspects that sometimes they wouldn't, they weren't as happy with. But you know, you do it because your boss, your boss tells you to do it. Right. I mean, in another layer again in all of this. Um, so Triple H, Paul Levesque takes over. Now Vince is his father-in-law, so you know, does Vince? You know, can you envision Vince saying to you know? Triple H over like a Sunday dinner, you know, you shouldn't do this with Brock Lesnar or you, sh- you know, ma- you sh- make sure Roman keeps the title for 200 more days. I mean, it's, it's, a, it, as someone who's followed wrestling, it's impossible for me to think that doesn't happen. Uh, it's impossible. Well, you know, I think it, that, and also Stephanie in, in, in her position, he's, he's going to be giving her advice. You would think, right. You know, so right. I think the influence he's gone, but I don't think that the influence is not there because as you said, you know, like there's going to be, times where he speaks to his daughter and just goes, you know, Hey, you know, do this, do this, do this. And she'll listen because Vince has, you know, 40 years experience in the chair and uh, ran the company. And, you know, if he were, you know, if, 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 you know, if he was your father-in-law and he gave you suggestions, you may not take every suggestion, but you will absolutely listen to everyone. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, Now the fans, WWE fans, you, you know, they, I think a lot of them think like, okay, we're going to see changes and right away and all these things they want done differently. And there's all this stuff with Kevin Dunn. And um, I, I would assume it's going to be a, a gradual change here. I, I, I don't, I would assume what we see, you know, what made this, let me backtrack, what made the Vince retirement even more shocking, if you want, you know, they had a, a Monday Night Raw this week at Madison Square Garden, which everyone knows is a special deal to Vince and always has been for wwe and then they have their second biggest pay-per-view on saturday in SummerSlam. so you know that can tell you sort of the fact that you know vince had to go if it was done at this time but i would imagine the plans for SummerSlam, for example they can't be drastically different no no right right yeah 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 yeah. i mean the, the the raw show was pretty much laid out before vince left you know i mean they do that work you know wednesday thursday um he left on friday so most of that, I heard there were a few minor changes, but, um, you know, it's essentially that show now going forward, you know, all this work this week, that's going to be, you know, um, um, on, on Paul. And um, I think SummerSlam, as far as, um, 
you know, finishes and stuff, I think he'll, he'll probably have a little bit of, uh, you know, not a lot of influence on. And then, um, you know, as far as uh, going forward, I think that, you know, we will see, you know, gradual changes and perhaps new characters being mixed in and, and uh, you know, it'd be very fascinating to watch. I think that's, I think there's a lot of curiosity right now. Right. And in terms of the TV production, you know, every, you know, it, it, it's fans, I think, feel frustrated that every promo is so heavily scripted. Do you think something like that changes with Vince gone and triple and pull it back in? Well, Stephanie was the one who pretty much, you know, introduced scripted promos and a large writing team. They have a large writing team. Right. So um, there might be some people who they have confidence in. And they, there has always been people like Kevin Owens, you know, who's a great t- talker, you know, where they'll, they'll go like, you know, you, um, you know, hit your time cue and, 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 and um, you know, I mean, it's scripted word for word, but some of the talent has influence on the scripting and works with the writers on the scripting. A lot of, you know, you know, the top talent does. Right. So I don't expect that aspect to be different, but maybe the aspect of how of what is scripted, because there was a lot of scripting that they did that was we used to always get frustrated because they would talk in a manner and use verbiage that real people would never use in that situation right. because Vince liked certain terms and everything. And Stephanie's a big buzzword person, you know, I mean, she, right. she's always talking buzzwords. So I think some of that will still exist, but I'm hoping that the, the talking will become more conversational and more realistic. But as far as the end of scripting, I don't expect that. Uh, that was one of my questions I wanted to ask you, you know, v- the, Vince is famous for all these sort of restrictions on the words. Like you're right. not, you shouldn't say belt. I believe you're not belt, allowed to belt say is a belt. word he didn't like wrestling. He didn't really like, right. right. They had to be superstars, not wrestlers. Yeah, uh, there were a few others in there. The belt one, I know. Um, does that you think that changes at all? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's there's no reason for it. those were just like we would call them Vince isms. Right. And right. I don't I don't think there's any need to keep the Vince isms. Um, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Were you surprised at all on Monday night that right out of the gate there was sort of two Vince jokes? Um, Paul Heyman, the brilliant and hysterically wild and talented paul Heyman, his mic was not working and he said to the sound guy you must be from new jersey and then he said we're going to write you up you may be the next one out of here and then of course there was roman with theory saying your daddy's not here anymore were you at all surprised they went there right away on monday night um with Heyman, it's just like he's really quick on the on the the draw and um, that was what he came up with with roman um you know, what's funny is because I totally misinterpreted that line. I was like the only one I, because because uh, in storyline, Theory's father had been like uh, Johnny Gargano, but they were they were referring to Vince. And I thought, oh, right. why did they refer to Johnny Gargano? So I totally like it. it okay. I, I don't think kind of almost like that was a, that was hilarious, you know, but um, surprised. No, no, they're right. they're looking to be a little edgy. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. Um, another thing in all this that I'm sure if people listening who are into wrestling who are into wwe where is shane mcmahon where does he fit into in into this at all or is he just completely done and this has no impact on him you know you don't you can never say anything about the future um you know right now there's nothing he's not in the company he was fired by vince um when january right and um but you never say never you know and he's still the brother-in-law of of paul levesque um and obviously the the brother of, of Stephanie, and um, he's got a long history. The idea of bringing him back in some television form at some point, I could see it. Um, so, man, management, I mean, you never say never, but it's, it's you know, he's been out of management for so many years. So, um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't say like, oh, 100% he'll never come back. I actually expect at some point someday he will. So I'm going to go off the highway here and and pause all this just to follow up on something you because I, I find it fascinating where you you said Vince fired Shane now if I remember correctly the story was that Shane was in charge of the Royal Rumble and I guess it was a disaster and Vince fired Shane is that an accurate synopsis or is there more to it than there that? Were, I mean I mean it was the Royal Rumble he was in charge and um then there was I think that there were um problems between him and and i think it was brock lesnar about some of the scripting of the rumble and brock pretty much gets whatever he wants and um there was a feeling that he was booking the royal rumble all around himself too much as opposed to other people i know that there was a spot where you know matt riddle who's like one of their upcoming big stars you know they were having like a slug fest and he was going to get the best of riddle who actually fought in ufc and is you know 16 years younger and all that and i think that there's and that actually happened in the match i was and it's kind of like 
um, you know, that one got through where it's kind of like, um, yeah, you know, he's it, it's it's it. And there were other things. And, and yeah, he got fired after that. And the rumble. Yeah, the rumble wasn't a great rumble. And now I don't know if you know this. If you don't know this, just tell me. I don't want to ask you to opine on things. But Vince firing his son. Is that a difficult decision for Vince or is it Vince McMahon and he doesn't care about firing? I mean, it, it just sounds wild to me that he fired his son. Um. Yeah, I mean, it's wild to me, too. That, But, but you know, Shane's come and gone many, many times. Right. But, I mean, as far as, like, you know, how Vince views it or anything like that, you know, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know Vince well enough to to know, you know, if how hard it was. I'm, I'm sure it's not easy. But like right. I said, Vince will do whatever he thinks is right for the company, you know, and that right. includes firing his son or, you know, removing his uh, son-in-law from certain duties or whatever he thinks at that moment, whether right or wrong, is the best thing for the company. He will make that move.